All right, good evening. Welcome to the March 12th, 2013 meeting of the Manchester Town Council. Uh, 7 p.m. tonight, we did have a closed session to discuss uh, personnel pursuant to state government article section 10-508A, the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, promotion, compensation, so on and so forth of um, town positions. Um, sorry for getting started a few minutes late. Uh, we did kind of push up against that 30-minute time limit we set for a hard stop and then to allow everybody to get in and get settled. Um, took a couple of minutes. First order of a business is the approval of January 8th, 2013 minutes and the February 12th minutes. You should have copies of both of those in your packets. So again, the January minutes were not uh, completed and ready for review and approval at the February meeting, so we're doing both of those now. We can handle them separately or together, however you guys choose to proceed. Probably clean and do separate, but whatever you want. I'll make a motion that we accept the January 8th, 2013 minutes. I'll second that. Motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. February. I'll make a motion that we accept the February 12th, 2013 minutes. I'll second it. Motion to second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. So now we have a receipt of February 2013 treasurer's report. This is also in your packet. We, we did handle January's treasury report at the February meeting. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion that we receive the February treasury report. I second that. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Mayor's report, just a couple of quick items. Um, quick update on the police chief search, which is ongoing. Um, the official report, we, we have done uh, some, some work, and we're working with Hampstead on some background information um, to, to vet out a possible candidate. We have received that back, and we're obviously not at the point tonight, so there will be no official appointment vote or anything like that this evening on a police chief, but we are, uh, that is ongoing, and we hope to have, uh, be moving that process forward in the near future. Hopefully next month or so. Board of Elections, we do have an election coming up in May, and this afternoon, I guess, no, it's just a little while ago, I swore in Marianne Wareheim to election boards member, and we have two other individuals, Nancy Herman and Velva Lamont. If you'd be willing to come up to the microphone and we could uh, swear you ladies in. For the record, thank you for doing that for the town and for those of you that have not been in, that is a, a job that takes some time. Um, 
especially on that night to count the votes and get them correct. Moving right along, town administrator report, Steve. Okay, good evening, Mayor and Council. We'll go ahead and start with the February administrative report. Uh, the Sheets Expansion MTBE issue, Environmental Alliance, on behalf of Sheets, has requested that the double sampling with Fountain Valley Labs be discontinued. That request has been granted based on no discrepancies over the past several years. Uh, there is no change in regards to the SHA projects. Our solar project, we do have a meeting scheduled for this Thursday, March the 14th at 2 p.m. in regards to receiving the first draft of the study by CQI. I invite, invite the mayor and the council to that if you're available. Uh, the ethics ordinance draft is currently under review with the State Ethics Commission. The charter change in regards to the police department and town administrator, you have received draft on this from our attorney. So if you would like to comment on that, I'd appreciate it. Our Maryland Energy Administration grant, the letter of intent was completed by the March 1st deadline. The application form is currently being completed. In fact, I completed it today, and of course, we'll meet the deadline of April 1st. It appears we will receive around $20,000 in grants for that. <coughs> I copied the Mayor and Council in regards to a letter to Principal Clark at Manchester Valley High School in reference to a youth representative. Uh, I have not received anything back from Principal Clark. Uh, Councilman I've, Benner, have I've you heard, heard anything? Okay, yeah. very good. Um, under new construction and code enforcement, construction continues and enforcement continues. Under miscellaneous items, I attended the monthly WRCC meeting on February the 27th. A presentation was given by Glenn Edwards, who is Carroll County's NPDES representative in regards to illicit and Ill illegal discharges into the stormwater system. Uh, our DPW employees will be receiving training on March 14th on how to spot and identify illegal discharges. Our cleaning bid contract is still under review, and Doug Strong's Eagle Scout project over at the post office is approximately 90% complete. Uh, that really turned out well over there. I've had a lot of good comments about that. Moving right along, we'll go ahead and get into the February 2013 Public Works Report. Uh, you have in front of you the monthly water and wastewater status report. Uh, for the water, wastewater, and stormwater study, we had a meeting on March the 1st. Uh, the company gave us a progress report on that. That's moving right along. Uh, the Manchester Valley High School pumping station status, the mobilization has started. The shop drawings for the equipment are currently being reviewed and approved. You may have seen some work being done down there over the last several weeks. I also included uh, both under uh, the information for water and wastewater, our water pumping comparisons and also our water collection, wastewater collection comparisons going back four years. So you can review that information. Under wastewater, the wastewater treatment plant was in compliance for all permit parameters for February. The switch over to spray irrigation took place on March 1st. Uh, I had mentioned to you before in my previous report about the MPDES training. Under maintenance roads and parks, uh, we have an action item tonight, and we did receive bids back on the 2000 Chevrolet utility pickup truck, so that's an action item we have to act on. The Gazebo Project Open Space Project is underway at Christmas Tree Park. The Gazebo will be delivered over the next several weeks. I want to thank my parks folks and my maintenance department folks for doing a good job on that. We had seven snow and ice events for February, and also with us tonight is Mr. Curtis Blank. Uh, he is here this evening in regards to some proposals to the skate park. Any questions for me? Hey, Steve, looking at um, average gallons of water pump per day during February and January, do you know, I mean, obviously February is less days, so the total gallons would be less. What the difference is? Yep. You know, why it's $35,000? We had nine water leaks in January. Yep. We finally got those under control. I believe if I go back in my report, I believe seven of them were on the homeowner's side and two were actually on our side. And actually, I'm pretty sure in January we had a water main break on Park Avenue. My memory serves me right. I think you're right. Um, Steve, as far as the youth representative that we're working on, I'm wondering if there's 
we could reach out to Principal Clark again and find out sure. maybe if there's a, you know, poli sci teacher or somebody. We can do that. Who might yes. take that off his plate. Also, would we be offering service hours for this? Is that a? Yes. I believe with the past youth reps we did. Okay. Yes. We might just throw that out there too to Correct. sweeten the pot. Yes. You want to talk about that? The charter change? We can. You said you wanted to discuss the charter change? Uh, I yes. sent you information. I sent right. you a draft copy of information from our attorney mm -hmm. in regards to two options. Uh, so, you know, you can discuss that between yourselves. Uh, just get back with me with any recommendations and I'll ship them off to the attorney. Okay. So we have an action item <coughs> in here as well. <coughs> Should be a paper here. In the, in the yes, you have, you have a memo from uh, Donnie Nott, our director of public works. Uh, we had a 2000 Chevrolet 3500 pickup truck with utility body and snow plow. Uh, we did have a minimum bid on that. The blue book value was 8,500. That was our minimum bid. We did receive two bids, one from Claude Warner for $8,801, and the other from Roger Harris Sr., <clears throat> excuse me, that did not meet the minimum. Uh, it is staff recommendation to go with Mr. Warner's bid of $8,801. I make a motion we receive Claude Warner's bid, or accept Claude Warner's bid for $8,801 for an hour. I'll second that motion. Motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> and for the record, I'm not related to. To that Warner? Please. Uh, no. <laughs> please say. I would have told him he could come in a lot lower than that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anything else for, uh, for Steve? All right. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Police report. Of a police report here submitted by Sergeant Getz. Some highlights include they responded for 61 calls for service during the month for arrest, three theft, one aggravated assault, five vehicle collisions, two involving personal injuries. Uh, we did have a gentleman at the January meeting express some concerns about the 3000 block of Westminster Street with speeding. The police did do some additional or some exploratory enforcement in that area identified that you know there really was a problem there they've done some enforcement over the past month so that everybody knows uh, and that enforcement will continue until we can get that area under control I don't know if I see him here tonight um, I guess that's it it is also you know a reminder to um, there have been some incidents of people breaking into cars, stealing easy items. It's a very common crime we have in the area. Most of us, a lot of us don't tend to lock everything at our house, including our cars, and people will kind of roll through neighborhoods at night and get as many as they can in the neighborhood. So remind you to lock your car, you know, what you want's left in the driveway. Um, as we're moving on, I know there's a lot of people here tonight. Um, as a reminder, if you'd like to speak, um, Please sign the sign-in sheet, and there's some of you guys who probably repeat and, and know the, the routine. So please sign the sign-in sheet, put down the topic you'd like to speak on. If you don't want to speak, that's fine. Uh, if you change your mind later, then we'll have you um, kind of come up and state your name, and that way we have a record of you know, kind of who's here and says what. Um, there's also a, on the back of all these, this is not new, this has been here for five or six years, but just a code of conduct, so we'd like to ask everybody to, and it's been fine, but just as a reminder. All right, Mr. Curtis Blank has, uh, he emailed us, what, a month or so ago? Yeah, about a month. About a month ago, and uh, would like to propose some changes to the skate park. So he is on the agenda, and the floor is yours. I'll go ahead and start, uh, I'll set the stage. Uh, Curtis came in, he, uh, he, as Mayor Warner said, he sent us an email. We responded back, he came in and he spoke to myself, my director of public works, my maintenance supervisor, and also my park supervisor with uh, some ideas that he had uh, for the skate park. 
he has come up with some drawings. He had showed us these drawings. Um, to add a little caveat to this, uh, we are behind him 100% as far as the uh, management staff is. So, Curtis, the floor is yours. All right. Um, I'll try to explain this as easily as possible. Uh, on the front of the packets I passed out, I have this beautiful sketched illustration of uh, Manchester Skate Park from the entrance. And um, everything that isn't circled with the green Sharpie is previously built there. And um, under each of the little obstacles I sketched in, there's a number one, two, and three. Um, and that's basically applies to the next pages in the packet. Each item uh, is like, there's a computer generated image of it underneath it. And um, the items I propose to build there would be number one, the um, concrete grind ledge uh, made out of cinder blocks and angle iron along the side. So us could, we could like grind on it. Um, the second one is a concrete quarter pipe. There's a, um, I think there should be three different sketches of um, each one just to show the framework and how it's built. And then the third would be a concrete um, kicker ramp, which is a ramp that tricks are done off of into the air rather than on the um, coping on the top. And uh, the reason why I would like to build these is because I've used the skate park for since I can't even remember when, like sixth grade. And um, I've, I've seen the rise and fall of the skate park. I've noticed a lot of vandalism and other bad things going on down there. And I just thought um, frequently using it if there was some new stuff built, maybe out of concrete, uh, that would kind of raise the morale of the park and bring down some of the bad behaviors going down there. And uh, talking to my friends that go down there, I, I think they'd like to see a lot of these things that I propose to build. And I would just like your permission to build them myself if I could come up with the funds on my own. I don't have a question for you, Curtis. This is directed at Steve and Kelly. If you guys saw the Carroll County Times today, there was an article about the skate park in Sykesville. And their insurance rates for their skate park are going up because they have some structures that were built in there by young people like Curtis out of concrete. And that apparently get above two feet. Is that something you guys have looked at regarding insurance? We have not. Uh, we've had the same insurance carrier since the skate park was built. There's a possibility that, the, as you say, there could be some changes, so we can check into that. They yes. said, uh, the article read that they've only had one payout during the entire time that the skate park has been open. I have no idea how long, mm -hmm. uh, for about $714. And the insurance company isn't really worried about too much, but they did say with these fixed or concrete apparatus or apparatus, it would raise their rates. Okay. So I'm on board with the mission, but... I think that's something that we need to address if that is an issue for us. We can, we can definitely, Curtis, we will check into that for you. Okay. So that's based on who built it or based on the materials? The material. If, um, if I remember, it was the materials because it was concrete. If, um, and, and above two feet? Above two, two feet and above concrete, correct. How, how tall is that uh, grind rail? Uh, the, the grind ledge would be probably about 14 inches, no, no higher than the knee of you know, your average person. The main concern would be the quarter pipe because that would probably be about as high as this. But I don't know if it really makes a difference if it's made out of cement or concrete, but if cement is like the loophole through that, I mean, I could always use cement. I, I don't know. I read the article real quick when I got home from work, glanced at it, I remember certain facts. I'd say so. if it could be modified and, and just take concrete and cement out of the picture, if it could be modified to be made out of wood, do you feel that that would be a problem? Um, if it could, I'd, I'd highly prefer it to be made out of concrete Understand. just because I see how people kind of tend to disrespect things down there. And concrete, if they did choose to do that, it'd give them a little bit of a harder time. I, d I just feel like it would last longer with the weathering and stuff since we have some pretty harsh winters. Right. To answer both your questions, we'll check on that. And it may not be an issue. It's just that it, sure. it, it was on the, in the Carroll County Times today. Yep. Understand. Could we, um, 
I mean, assuming that your considerations of two feet in the materials is something that's going to trigger. I, I don't know. I'm just, I, I know. I'm just relaying what I read. I don't know. If, I don't know if that has been a, a point of discussion with our insurer, or is it something we need no, to address and get? Yeah. Hey, yes or no before he starts or sure. the project is started. That, I don't want to see work being done and then an insurance company says, "Hey, exactly. guess what? Your rates yeah. are, are going up." How about? And one other thing I forgot to mention is I, I work a pretty low income job, so the time that it would take to build these would be around a year. It's not going to be like a. <laughs> wake up next week and there's like yeah. this great skate park. It's going to be like block by block and eventually, oh, wouldn't that get, you know, like, like I said, I'm fully supportive. I, I have three sons. They all enjoyed skateboarding yeah. when they went to the park. That was in the Carroll County Times today. I don't know if it's an issue or not. It may or may not be. Yeah, because I, I got some support from my other friends that go there and their parents, so every, everyone's kind of hyped on it. So we're just, we're just trying to get it built and made. <laughs> Basically, I don't think this group's going to criticize you for not moving fast on things. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd, I'd appreciate it. I'm definitely no high roller. <laughs> not yet. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> so I'm a skate park contractor, I guess. Yeah. Could we, um, does anybody have a problem if, and in, in, you know, assume maybe this works for you, that uh, Steve and Kelly could check into the insurance considerations? And then we could kind of we could give conditional approval to start on any items at at your pace that don't change our insurance situation. Correct. So if like say that that grind ledge or it, it, you know if that fits, then do that. And, and if something else, we'll kind of push the other two out until we can kind of figure out what's going on yeah, insurance that, wise. That would be brilliant. That's why the grind ledge was <laughs> number one because number one. that that's like. 20 bucks to make. So. You're, you're, one, you're one step ahead of me. So that, that'll be done by tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, yeah most, most likely. Okay. Um, we need to vote. You guys want to take a vote on that plan? Sure. Any motion? I'll make a motion. We go along with it it's in stages until we find out what the, the uh, insurance may be. If it's nothing, and that'll coincide with your... Movement. <clears throat> All right. Okay. I second that. All right. Motion seconded for discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Uh, thank you guys very much for your time. I appreciate it. I'll be down with my skateboard next by Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> it better be made of concrete. Yeah. <laughs> the wood's not going to hold. <laughs> Stress test is grind ledge. <laughs> Um, Lori, do we have anybody signed in? Yes, please. Thank you. And again, for those of you that were here last week, or last month rather, um, I'm going to do my best to read names so you can correct me. So, uh, Mr. Friedman? You might come up, kind of state uh, your name, address, and then. Barry Friedman, 2760 Washington Way, in Manchester, Maryland. Um, the reason I'm up here today is that uh, we've had an issue with traffic speeding, stop sign running throughout the area. I've talked to Steve several times. I've talked to the police officers in Manchester several times. And this has been going. They had a you know, radar set up in October for about two weeks, and results aren't that great. Um, Just the speed sign or? Speed limit, stop sign, people running stop sign. No, by. I mean, when you say it was two weeks, was that you're talking about the speed trailer or? Yeah, the speed trailer was okay. two weeks. Right. Um, you know, the police officers I've talked to said, oh, we're going to be sitting over there. I haven't seen them. Um, I leave in the morning. The biggest problem I have is that roughly around 6 and 6.15, there's two cars that run through the neighborhood um, in the morning um, that run the stop sign. And the reason I can tell, I've seen them twice. Which is, um, and I'm sorry to cut you off. The stop is this 2760 or 22? <coughs> Washington originally? Yep. Oh, I live in Washington originally. I know. Okay. And I noticed too. Okay. Uh, the one car who lives on Washington, these, these are residents that the yeah. problem is. Right. One is um, an adult with young kids, but he has a little white Sycon and he comes up to the intersection and does not stop. And I can hear it because the engine revs up and it doesn't slow down. 
and I can hear it when he comes right through the intersection of Southwestern and Washington Way, right up through my through the Ridgely. Going towards Park. Yep. Okay. Park Valley. Right. And he goes to the top of the hill. And he doesn't stop area there. Or he might slow down, but he doesn't stop. Um, we've said something to him in the past, and he's still doing it. He did it. I didn't hear him this morning, but I heard him yesterday morning. Coming from Manchester Farms. Mm -hmm. He lives on the other side of uh, Southwestern and Washington Way. Uh, there's several other cars. The biggest issue I have is also my son is we're, we're teaching him how to drive and we've had people pass him because he's doing the speed limit at 20. People mm -hmm. say hey I'm not going to wait I'm going to pass him and it's not us out with Steve. Uh, we talked about that right afterwards. Um, so they'll set the stop sign they don't want to wait the stop sign they'll go around the car uh, or even on southwestern Charmel that intersection they don't stop at that stop sign either. They think it's a yield sign. Uh, I've stopped many people and said, you know, that's a stop sign. It's a neighborhood. It's got kids, it's got right. the hills, it's got falls rolling down the hills. It's a safety issue. The problem I have is that I don't see the police out there. I know you're shorthanded, um, but, you know, I know they don't come on to six. And the thing <coughs> they don't want to do is sitting down there. And then they say, well, there's no place to sit that they can see anything. Well, when it's dark out, they can sit up on Ridgely above your house yep. and see that stop sign very clearly in the dark if they don't have their lights on and be able to, to identify cars going through. Now, as it's getting lighter now, that's going to be another right. issue. Or back by the pump house. Or something. Well, the pump house, they can see it. When they or the back by the well, you could. So, but there's still issues back in there. Yeah. And, you know, I know Doug lives back up in there. You live back in there. You know, there, there's issues. And, you know, it's been an ongoing thing. This the test was back in October 5th through the 24th of October. And, yeah, I saw the police back in there a couple times after that. But I haven't seen anything recently. Okay. So you, and I, I have not noticed a, so I'm either gone and not home at six in the morning or I'm not aware at six in the morning of the intersection. But you think there's a predictable pattern at six, six fifteen, weekdays? One Pacific Bay, you probably can tell. Okay. I, I, I think I know the video we're talking about. I've seen it. Um, I've noticed and I've communicated in my like a 10 to 10.30 p.m. Um, pattern with the same thing. Seven o'clock in the morning, also. Okay. And my wife goes leaves around seven, and she sits. She goes down uh, Washington to Southwestern, and people run that stop sign right there at Southwestern. So you, you live you live near it to it. I I've called it. I think it's the most disrespected stop sign in town. You want a short mill? Um, or ours? I think it was short mill is probably pretty bad too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just a, it's a, that whole area, and I know there are other areas that have the yeah. same issue. Yeah, there, there are. I mean, there's a couple. But you know, I don't see any presence. I've even talked to the sheriffs. And he said, we'll do what we can do, but I don't see yeah. them over there at, you know, coming through. Now, okay. I'm not home between 8 and 5, but I'm home in the morning. I'm home most evenings, and I really don't see anything. I, 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 you know, I work from home sometimes. I don't know that it's as bad during the middle of the day. It There's not, not that be, much traffic during the middle of the day. I think it's first thing in the morning, yeah. you know, in the afternoon, yeah. you know, when traffic starts picking up the kids. And that's when it's going to get bad. And I think you see, and I've noticed late at night, there's not as much traffic again, but the people that come through fly through. I will, I will address it and we'll get some people out there. Okay. Thank you. Go there. Sure. Uh, Melinda Smith. Yeah. Okay. Hello. As we all know, I was here in February. We discussed the chief of police. Um, and you said there really haven't been any updates except for the background investigation was done. Is that correct? So we've had a background investigation done. Mm -hmm. And, okay. and completing a report given to us. Okay, so the question I have is, when was, because obviously you all read it and had to initial it. I can't read it, <coughs> I understand that right now. But the question I have is, and can I proceed because I know so it, there's other people here, so am I allowed to proceed with this right now? So, well, I'm not exactly sure what you have, but it's, it's the same rules that Okay, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna mention names, I'm not doing any that, okay? I got but, a question right there. How do you know that we all read it and we all initialed it? Because that might not be a true statement. Well, let me just say I've spoken to everybody with Mr. Pacelli, and I've pretty much spoken to every council person, and they told me when they were going to read it and sign it. Pretty much? Did you talk to everyone? I spoke to everyone but Mr. Pacelli. Okay. And I wasn't allowed to speak to him, I was told, so. I spoke to Mr. Riley yesterday and I was on the way to the bank and I told him that I would speak to him here because I couldn't speak to him at the time. And everybody else, I believe they'll tell you I spoke to them all. Um, 
Okay, I so guess. before you get started, I guess Doug and for everybody, like we want to have a forum so that people can, I guess, share concerns, share issues, address the council. I'd really like to, and I don't, I don't want to cut anybody off. I've never been big into censoring anybody, or, or but if anything, if it, if something gets to the point where we kind of have like a like a zoo and kind of back and forth, then we're gonna, I'll have to okay, cut well, it off. That's the question I have. Then where where am I allowed to speak and say what I have you, to say? You you can. I'm just I'm asking just because you I'm, can, I don't know and what I don't know what you speak. have to say exactly. And you know, I have spoken with you, but I don't right. I didn't get a chance to catch up in the last couple of days. But I, I'm okay with people sharing concerns or saying what they want. If it gets to the point where you know it's just kind of turning into a television show, it's not really the I, level I, of the quorum. That okay, I mean, I kind of feel like it's already turned into that. But that's fine. I'll, okay. I'll proceed. Um, I get the one question I have. The main question to start with is with every with whoever has read the paperwork, and I I know I've spoken to everybody here. Was further investigation done on the other issues that I asked about versus just the um, not sustained situation? Did it go further than that? Because I'm going to be very honest with you when I tell you that the, investi the investigator, I felt like I was being interviewed. He came to my house, went through frame by frame by frame as he told me he watched on the TV and asked me everything that I said and made me repeat what I said and where did I know this from and that type of thing. I'm not the one applying for chief of police. I'm the only one that had facts that I had already given, which I was willing to give. You know, he contacted the other two parents, and the one parent said she felt like she was being interrogated. We're the innocent people. We're just trying to state our opinions, and we're having to go through, you know, basically the same interview. And, I, you know, and that's fine. I answered it. I told him what I knew. He told me a lot of things that I didn't know, which was very interesting. And, you know, he told me that he spoke to the MSP, and they told him that he was within his legal right to pull my daughter's driving record. And I'm going to tell you, he must have left the part out, because when you're out of jurisdiction, you can't, because I have it right here. And everybody can read it. Anybody can get it off the Internet. I got it off the Internet. Okay? That's one issue. And that's, that's neither here nor there. We've already talked about that. We know that can't be done. I can show anybody who wants to read it. And, you know, I'm sure there's – I wouldn't bring any police officers up there in here, but I know there's some that can certainly tell you that. Um, for, for the record, is that a, a report you have, or is that? It's um, off the internet that states when you're out of jurisdiction. It, it basically, I don't. You don't need to read the whole thing, obviously, but I'm the sorry. first couple pages I highlighted the information's there. Um, I specifically asked the police officer, um, you know, a lot of questions about it. And he told me that he was going to check into it further <coughs> and dig deeper. He was told to dig deeper. My question is, did he? I'm just curious. Okay. I, I guess obviously I, nobody I, I can wanna, tell me anything they're not allowed to say or whatever. Right. I want to make sure. No, so we're not allowed to say. I understand. But um, I also have information here on not sustained. It says what not sustained means, and I'm not. You know, I brought a whole bunch of stuff here, and obviously it's probably not the time to get into it because I've looked at everybody's face when some things happen. So I understand that, but we have to have somewhere that we can speak about this then, because the people of the town deserve. As you can see, there's 30 people here. The people of the town deserve an answer. And then we're bringing in new council people. And am I going to have to go through this whole thing again with all new council people if you guys don't come back? I mean, I don't think, I'll be honest with you, I don't think it's fair to the candidate to be sitting around for six months waiting. I don't think it's fair for the people of the town. I don't think it's fair to have to go through this with a whole new council if, you know, you guys aren't here. I mean, I don't understand what's taking so long. And we keep going through this and through this and spending more money. And well, I know they say we haven't spent money, but somebody's paying the investigator unless it's the town of Hampstead, I guess. Somebody has to pay for the polygraph and all that kind of stuff. So we spent some money. So either we need to make a decision and say, okay, he's in or he's not in. And if he gets in, then the town will deal with what they have to deal with. And I'm, not the, I'm the only one here. Well, I'm not the only one here that's going to speak. I'm the only one speaking up. Obviously, people here have things to say. But a lot of people can't speak for certain reasons or don't want to because they don't want to, you know, have a problem. And, you know, and I guess one other question I have is, is it normal practice for you to be contacted by the person that's being investigated the day prior to you being interviewed? Because I find that interesting that the person that was being interviewed, the candidate, is one step ahead of everything. We were contacted the day prior that he wanted to talk about some things. We didn't contact him back because I was told not to. The lawyer told me don't contact him back. Um, so. Why, how would he know to contact me the day before I'm getting interviewed by an investigator? I mean, I think there's a, I'd be honest with you, right now, I hate to say it, I think there's a little bit of good old boy system going on here because 
there's too many coincidences of things that are going on, and that being one of them. I didn't contact the person back. I do have the voicemail if anybody's interested in hearing it. I doubt you want to hear it here, but you can hear it in private. And, you know, I just, I'm really, really concerned about this. I'm really concerned how things are going. And I, I don't know, I don't know where we're heading from here because I can't ever get a clear answer. Every answer I hear is it's, it's progress, it's progress, it's progress. Well, if he's done everything he's supposed to do and we're going to hire him, vote on it tonight and hire him. I don't, I mean, vote, nominate him, vote on him, whoever's going to vote. I mean, everybody here has read all the stuff. Does everybody know who they're voting for? I mean, vote. I, well, I keep dragging it on. I, I don't understand why we keep dragging it on. Either we're taking him or we're not. I think we know if we're taking him or not. And from your statement earlier, it makes me feel like I think we know we're taking him. So what are we waiting for? I mean, all I can ask is that, you know, either we withdraw the offer tonight or let's vote on it and bring him in as chief of police and be done with it. You know, I mean, I'm going to file for the Freedom of Information Act to get a copy of the investigation when it's all done anyway, just because I really would like to see what was really done. And I have the legal right to do that. And my biggest concern is I'm just worried that I'm going to have to do this before new council people again. I don't want to be here every second, second Tuesday of every month. You probably don't want me here every second Tuesday of every month. I, look, I'm not a dummy. I mean, I'm an educated person. I know that. I wouldn't want me here. But I do want, I, I just want some answers. And I think the other piece, that's why everybody's here. We all want some answers. You know, let somebody speak up and say, you know, I mean, I was told, I know Mr. Pacelli can't talk. I know that. But let's, let's hear what everybody thinks. I mean, we can, why can't we just nominate him and vote if that's what we're going to do? Either because the new council comes in, what, May 1st? We have one more meeting. So either we nominate him in and just say, hey, we're going to take him and we're going to try it and let the town deal with what they're going to deal with, or say we're going to withdraw it and let's start over. And this is, this is a waste of time and money and everything else going into it. I, I, just, I don't understand what I can't figure out for the life of me. I mean, I'm an educated person. I may not be a police officer, I'm not the mayor, I'm not <laughs> council people, but what are we waiting for? What else are we doing? If the background investigation is done and it's been done for two weeks, what are we waiting for? Does anybody know? Is that what your question is? I My main question is, what are we waiting for? Why aren't we just voting him in? Nominate him and vote him in. If everybody knows who they're if, if the people have read it, or the most of you have read it, or whatever, everybody has their feeling and their opinion, okay, of who, what they're going to do. I think we all know that. So, you know. I mean, I, I don't want to speak for everybody else. I, I don't, <clears throat> you know, being probably having access to more information about this than, than you may, I don't know that everybody knows what they're going to do. It may seem that way. and I don't want to speak for anybody individually, but I don't think that's kind of where everybody is. But then what other information are they getting? If the background investigation is done, how much more can they get to decide? I mean, what else are we getting? What else uh, is well, going to sway uh, their decision? I think that there could be um, follow-up meetings with um, with a candidate. There'd be an, an opportunity to talk to the investigators, which we haven't had. So we have a written report, but we haven't had an opportunity to walk through that with them. And so I, I know it's it takes a long time to, to get. It has taken a long time, and this process is not fast. Um, the best, most honest answer I can give you, I think I've told you this before, is me personally, and I believe the town is a whole, we're trying to get as much information as we can to get to the best candidate and make the best decision we can. Well, we only have one candidate, so... No, there's more candidates. You said there's only one person that you made a conditional offer to. There's one person that has gone to the level of, of background investigation. Okay. So if we're only doing, why aren't we doing it for everybody else then? If, if they're in the running, why is one person doing everything? Just curious. If everybody's in the running or five people are in the running, why do we have one person doing a background check, one person doing a polygraph, and one person making phone calls? I mean, that's, these are questions that I'd like to answer. I mean, if that's the case and we have all these people, why? Why do we have one person? We have one person that we decide to go forward with the background investigation. Right. I, 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 I don't I'm saying. There's one person that you made an offer to, so I'm assuming that's who we're trying to get. I mean, it's quite obvious that's who we're trying to get. I mean, by the, by the interview I got... Everything I said, he tried to discredit me, which is why I had to bring all this paperwork and show him that he's not going to discredit me. My information was correct. I can't speak to the, your okay. interview. I mean, I don't know. I, I think that you wanted to be on the interview list or you wanted to be part of that. I don't. No, I didn't want to be. He oh. contacted me. I guess probably because of the last meeting. I don't know. I'm sure. Well, okay. Believe me, I know because he went through frame for frame and questioned me on every word I said. And that's fine. I, I don't care. I had nothing to hide. It was the truth. I can back up the truth. So. But my question is, again, I mean, I guess, are the council people allowed to speak? I mean, what do we, why, 
what's the holdup? Well, Why can't I, I would like to go ahead and speak. So um, I did read the, the what I was given, mm -hmm. a packet of information. I was told that there was more information that had not yet been released. Mm -hmm. And there's more information that has to be done yet based on our next moves. As far as the conditional offer, that is a, a human resource policy. It's pretty standard. Right, and I at least in the that. industries that I work in, mm -hmm. uh, we don't offer multiple candidates the same position. And just kind of, I mean, we offer them one at a time and, and go through that process. John, you know, it's okay, I've, I've never seen it done like that. Really? You know, I work for a big company as well, and okay. I'm not going to say who. I work for a huge company. Okay. Well, and you have to give everybody the same right. If you're if you're giving everybody the same option and opportunity, then they all deserve the same opportunity to go through these things. I mean, I was told by a council person, which I will not say who, that there was another person that was in the running that had some skeletons in their closet problems. They got rid of them right away. Why? Why do we get rid of them when, when we're still going back and forth about the same person? Well, I, I mean, I wasn't on the committee for the selections, but I, I mean, the, the, the procedure was simple. You know, we had the, the applicants, you know, it was open application, came in. The committee reviewed and, and selected, you know, a handful to move from resume phase to interview phase. And then all the names, everything was blot, were blotted out so that mm -hmm. they had no indication who the person was until they actually walked through the door for the, for the interview. And then based on those interviews, that committee selected one person to make a conditional offer to. So when we're talking about other candidates, we're talking about other candidates who are in that pool of people who were brought in for interviews. Those are still... Okay, those so are you're st saying there's still there's one candidate at this point, though, correct? Well, there's one candidate that we've moved forward with with a conditional offer. Now, that offer is conditional for a reason, right? Because right, there's... you've been saying that. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, we've said that at the last meeting, too. There's a conditional offer. There's a conditional offer. Sure. And... Like I said before, I don't think it's fair to a candidate either to sit around for four or five months as a conditional offer. Move forward. I mean, if we're going to move forward, move forward with it. I mean, I know there's political pressure. I've been told that to get a, to get a chief of police, to get a chief of police. I mean, let's get one. If, 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 every, if we have all this information, and he was done his interview weeks ago because he told me, and when I called into the town office, I know the, ch the paper was there, the folder was there, or the envelope, two weeks ago. All I'm saying is I just feel like... We are, I don't know why we're sitting on this or what we're doing. I mean, what else, what other information do we need? I understand, look, I understand that people have to do a drug test and their physical and all that stuff. That's fine. I'm talking about more background information that nobody can give me because I understand I'm not privy to it. But nobody can tell me if they've read enough that what they want to do. Nobody has an answer. And if they have all this information that a background investigation has been done and all these people have been interviewed, somebody has to have an answer. I don't understand. Well, if I could just speak again. So yes. the um, the packet that we got, I mean, we I think I believe we've all within the last two weeks have read it, mm -hmm. and we're going through a, a, these closed personnel you know meetings mm -hmm. um, to go through the process. I know that our next steps are to actually do another interview with the candidate and to do an interview with the with the reviewer with the um, the background investigation team. Because those are there's open-ended questions, um, and I'm taking into account your your testimony um, with that report, and I'd like to get clarification. I mean, we've spoken. Right. So right we've now, I, you know, we're not in a privately. position. I don't believe to make a recommendation on a on a vote because, frankly, there's still there's still questions out there. Okay. You know, I know I've got questions, and right now tonight, I'm not prepared to to cast a vote on this candidate because there's still too many questions, and I and also to be fair to the process fair to him and the other candidates. You know, you know what I mean? So I want to make sure we've gone through that. And then I know that if we decide that we're not going to go with this candidate, then we go to the next person that would then be given a conditional offer. The same kind of package would be, um, would be offered, and then the same whole background check has to be done on that next person. So um, I, it's a terribly long process, and I agree that it is um, a long time. I wish it could be, um, you know, expedited on certain so, levels. And, and I'm not on that. I'm, I'm like with the other fellows. I'm not on that committee. Um, okay. So here's the question: so. What happens when the new council comes in? If say you guys don't get voted back in, I don't know. You will. You won't. Whatever. I don't know. What happens? Do they have the whole council has to go through again, or do you guys stay in in for in area in the place and you vote on them? What happens? Well, if the, if the process was beyond the elections and we weren't here, then we would. So have we have no, to start the whole process over, and they have to read everything, and everybody has to do this again. Well, I, I would think that, 
I wouldn't imagine the process would be nearly as lengthy considering all the documentation would be there and the meetings would be held and the information from those meetings would already be in those candidates' hands. When I say candidates, I'm talking about right. town council okay. candidates. Okay, I mean, I'm a, look, I'm a town person. I'm only one person. I mean, there's a lot of people here that have an opinion. I'm very disappointed. I think this has been, I'll be honest with you, I think it's been a mockery. And, I mean, from what I've heard, if you, the interviewer, the stuff he told me, I didn't even know some of it. I did know some of the things. But he knew all this stuff. He should have been investigating it before he even came to see me. And, I mean, I just think, and nothing against anybody here personally, because I know you guys don't do the interviews and things like that, but it's an embarrassment. I'm going to be very honest with you with some of the stuff I've seen. I mean, I'm not an investigator, but I know, I know enough to know that some of the things that have happened, I mean, this has turned out to be, it's a, it's a mockery. And I mean, it's, it's embarrassing. I mean, I know, I know the other person was here last week, and I know she speaks up a lot. I didn't know her until I came here. But I mean, she's right about the liability, and it's a lot of it. It's a lot of it. And there's a, if everybody here is welcome to be, to, wants to be a part of that, then that's certainly your choice. You make the decision, and you know, I'll file for the Freedom of Information Act. I'll get a copy of it. I'll see what's what, and then we'll proceed from there if he gets hired. And that's you know, your choices. But I, I would hope that, I'll be honest with you, I'm disappointed that I can't get one answer. I can't get an answer except for we're looking into it, we're looking into it. I, that's what I hear every week, every month. So, I mean, you obviously you have concerns about this candidate. We've you, had this discussion right. last month. And you, and you brought these concerns forward. Mm -hmm. And I'm not the only one. I mean, right. you can look around. And then as a result of some of those concerns, you know, we've, you know, I mean, had you not come forward with your concerns, the report we'd have gotten from, from the police officers would have been even more brief. Right? It would have been a very brief report, <coughs> and we would have very little go on, and we probably would have already moved forward with this candidate. I'm, I'm speculating. I'm, I'm, I don't know I don't about know that because the mayor, the mayor said last month that there was a groundswell of people that called. I didn't know the groundswell. I was one person. And evidently the stuff they told him was a lot more than I had. I can tell you that by speaking to the investigator. So me just coming up to speak, you had a lot more information than what I gave. I know that for a fact. And, you know, whether you act on that or you don't act on it, uh, either, either way, whether it was uh, people or other right. people. I mean, or, I, I'll, I'll tell you, obviously I came up here and spoke, everybody right. knows that, but or, I'm not going to take the soul, whatever, right, a lot right. of people had a lot of opinions that were a lot worse than mine. Uh, uh, my point is not the number of people or anything okay. else. I'm, my, my point is, even if it was one citizen coming forward and saying, I have these concerns, this is, you know, something that you guys should consider, we have paused the process to consider. In the meantime, we've gotten a report and we are looking as, as Tammy pointed out to meet with the investigators and follow up on some of the things that you've pointed out. So I, you know, I, I wish the process was faster. You know, I mean, perhaps if we this was our full time jobs, we could devote forty hours a week to it. No, I, look, I understand that. I totally understand. I just feel like, and forget about the process even being so slow. It's how the process was handled. I mean, there's just so many things that you can't get answers on. And as people of the town, I think we deserve some answers. Nobody can give any. And Mr. Bocelli, I know he's not allowed to speak. I understand that. Or he, you know, I, I, I didn't even think he would be allowed to be here, but <coughs> he's not allowed to speak. But then let's have a private meeting. Let's have a Q&A. Let's have something that some people can get some answers. Why can't we bring up the investigator up here and let us ask him some questions? He has all the answers. Let us ask him. We don't have to, we don't have to talk to the candidate. We don't have to ask you. Let him come with the answers. Well, well, I, yeah, I, I don't know if they would do that. <laughs> okay, well, that's or, or, they probably won't. I, yeah. <laughs> they probably won't. I understand that. But all I'm saying is nobody can get answers. And I mean, right. I'm well, beating my head against the wall along with all these other people. They're taking every Tuesday night I, and coming here to get no answers. I think I, you're assuming we have the answer, though. You have a lot just, of them. You have the folder. And we're not giving them to Well, I, I'm saying <laughs> we, we don't have the ultimate answer that you're looking for is wh whether or not we're prepared to move forward with this candidate or not. And as, as Councilperson Black pointed out, we don't have that answer. And that's ultimately the answer you're looking for is, are we prepared to move forward? Yeah, because I'm not willing to, well, I shouldn't say I'm willing to. I'm going to have to be here every Tuesday night because right. a new council is going to come in. Right. He's not going to be the chief of police, and we're going to go through the whole thing again and waste all this time and all this money and all this aggravation because there's no decision made. How about everybody gets together, talks to the candidate, talks to the investigator this week and says, look, we have to know by April 1st. There's new people coming in May 1st. We have to make a decision. Instead of right. waiting until May or June when everybody has to start all over again, the candidate has to go through it all again because he's going to have to speak to the council people. We're going to have to go through it all again. The mayor is going to have to speak about everybody because I don't know if everybody's coming back or not. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows.
You understand? Do you, you see where I'm coming from? I think it's fair to say we're all, we're aware of those considerations, and we've had that discussion. Okay. And we really are trying to get to the best, fastest answer we can. So we have things no deadline, pop up. Basically, though. Well, there's never a deadline, right? I mean, well, I don't there want there to be, say asking. that in like, <laughs> the wrong way. There's not like a we we decided when we embarked on this that we were going to try to get the best answer we could, not fill a position as fast as we could. And that was something that everybody agreed on. Um, we didn't think it would take this long, and we would like to move forward as fast as possible. Roadblocks come up, things happen, and as Councilman Benner said, we pause and then say, okay, well, let's, let's take a look at this and make sure that we're getting everything that we can get. And then schedule, you know, it's, you know we don't have like, we can do this at 9, then do this at 11, then do this at 1, and just be done. I understand everybody else here has a job. I mean, I totally understand that. I'm just saying, I don't know. I guess I guess I have a sense of urgency with things, and I kind of feel like there should be more of a sense of urgency of getting this settled and getting the people together. I mean, I'm quite sure that if you pick one night that the investigator could be here, the candidate could probably be here, figure it out, and vote. I mean, I, I, I can't understand, but, I mean, that's fine. That's your process. You have to do what you have to do. I will tell you I'll be here every second Tuesday of the month until you decide, and probably every second Tuesday of the month after that, depending on what you decide. So, you know, I know we don't want a media circus, but I can tell you it's heading that way. Well, like, you, you, you could run, too. Well, and then, then you can get... Mr. Night. Riley told me I have to go through all this paperwork, and I don't want to do that. It's <laughs> <laughs> scared our candidates off. No, I'm just kidding. But, I mean, you know, I thought about it, but right now, I mean, I have three children. You know, and I can, right, I understand that. That's what I'm saying. I understand you have three. I know yours are older. I know you don't have to babysit, but. Um, <laughs> grandkids. Know, grandkids, true. But, I mean, you know, so I understand where you're coming from. All I'm saying is I just wish we could really get some answers and move along with this because I think this is like a long process that, and I'm, I know I'm beating a dead horse now, so I'm going to be I, done. But I agree with you on that. Not, not the dead horse part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a long process. Oh, I started, you me. snuck that in right before I. Okay. Oh. Um, <laughs> So, you know, that's where we're at. And, you know, I'll keep in contact because obviously, you know, I, I, along with some others, would like to know what's going on. And I'm sure there's going to be other people that speak because it's, we just need to do something. I mean, something needs to be done. We have a lot of information. Let's get some more. Let's move on. Let's decide. Okay. Okay. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate your, your comments. Uh, Joseph D'Antoni. My name is Joseph D'Antoni. I live on Lineborough Road in Manchester. Um, <clears throat> the reason why I'm here is on my part-time job, I work with a bunch of police officers, retired and active. And one night at work, I was sitting in the background and listening to them talk. And it happened to be about one of the candidates for the chief of police. And he apparently got in some trouble uh, in Baltimore County and in reference to to avoid the trouble and being investigated i heard he retired again i'm not sure of the person's name but according to what i heard from you know, the police officers and everything down at work that you know he was retiring to come here to be the chief of police so i'm assuming it's this candidate that everybody's talking about and all and also the way they were talking that everybody was underneath of him didn't like him. He caused problems for them. Not administrative, just. So I, I don't, guess you're going to say. I don't mean to cut you off. Sure. Um, so and I don't think you were here last month, but one no, of the no, sorry, and, I, and I probably should have reiterated some of the, some of the. You know, ground rules. I guess is that, you know, you, you're obviously free to say what you want, but in terms of, like a forum and and discussing this with respect to a particular candidate, you really need to limit it to. You know, if you have a personal experience, or you are you can be for or against, right? You can support a candidate or not support a candidate, but we don't. We, you know, we want to avoid just. You know, I heard from this person who knew this person. Oh, I, I, you know, I that someone doesn't like but, someone uh, else. From being, like I said, you know, the police officers that were when I still working for Baltimore County and everything. Okay. I'm gonna say I have, have to take their word, you know, with dealing with it, and not just want to bring it up. Okay. So, so unless, the candidate, no, you guys can do what you need to do in reference to the candidate. Okay. And thank you very much for your time. Thanks. Thank you. Bradley Eichhorst. Brad 
Bradley Ag Forest, got Moorfield Court, and the uh, Overlook Court Development. Um, just listening, I really didn't know exactly everything that's going on. I just know that with Boy Scouts and some other things that are going on, come up to watch things. My personal experience is being involved with background investigations, the agent that is doing it, that shares that information, and anything like that, that's a no. And all that other fun stuff. I know polygraphs at my yin yang, they take time for analysis. The background investigation does come in two and three different stages. You have your initial, and then you get more, then on the initial, you might get more people. Then those other people are also asked questions, and then another layer. All that has to be compiled all into one, and, per, uh, well, it's not one report. You're getting a, a, a report that is a summary of just things. Other details have to be typed up and done and gone over. And the individual that's being investigated will be set down with the investigator again to talk about certain issues that have come up so he can clarify them later for the person that might be employed for whatever group he works for can make a decision or give him you know a job of some sort but you know I, it takes six months to eight months just on the background investigation a special background investigation polygraphs can take two and three times to take if you can't do it the first time, if you've never done one the first time. So that's you know, all here and there. Other things I do for a living, hearsay. You can't report anything on hearsay. I can say anything. This person here, it could be true fact, but I'm not reporting the source. And if I say that, I'm, I, I'm not telling the truth. It's not something I was physically involved with. FOIA. It's a great tool to use. I agree, agree with that. But be ready when that happens because the privacy of the people that gave information to that investigator that sold, you know, and all that will be marked out. Personal information will be marked out. The simple fact is I can say, I saw you rob a bank. Well, when that person that was investigated also can ask for that FOIA information, they're going to protect me and or you saying that, oh, I can find out who it is and get back and get them. So when you get this piece of paper back, uh, FOIA is Freedom of Information Act, it is um, blotted out black. Only thing you're going to see is someone's comment saying Manchester Valley here or this, that here or anything else that is put into it. So it just, it, it takes, I know it takes a long time on what I have done in my lifetime. And you know, that was 20 years in the Navy, and I had to go through polygraphs. I had to constantly go through background investigations. But to think everything is going to just be, you know, hit, you know, one little piece of paper here, make a decision, you can't do that. I understand that. But also, when people are taking hearsay and turn it around and saying it's fact, it's also a defamation of character. And those people also can be held accountable for saying things like that. And that's all I got to say. Thanks, Brad. Um, that is all we have on the list. Does anybody else like to speak? Okay. Hearing none, we'll move into committee reports. Doug? We are still continuing the uh, code updates. Uh, we do have a meeting next Tuesday night. <coughs> Um, Stegger's Overlook will be here. We did go out and we've done some checks with the fire trucks and stuff, and uh, that's where we're at with that. So we'll be updating. Uh, I'm sure they'll be bringing in the next stage of what they want to do there. That's next Tuesday. Tammy? All right, well, um, the Parks Foundation has some. It's exciting news for the community. On March the 23rd is the big egg hunt. It's at 10 a.m. sharp, but I would advise you to bring your children at least 15 minutes early to get into their stations to grab the eggs. <laughs> Seriously. Um, they're also having something on April 16th called Dig This. It's um, a new challenge at the Pine Valley Park Prehistoric Hunter and 
gatherer camp archaeology site, um, Mr. Israel. So that's at 7 p.m. These are all free to the community. Um, it's at North Carroll Library, that particular event. And then May 5th is the Big Spring Fest. So there's three big events coming up. And if you've never been to Spring Fest, I would highly recommend everybody make an effort to get out there, take your family, invite friends, because um, it's a great display of Manchester's best and all the surrounding supporting community entities. There's lots of fun stuff for people of all ages. Crazy, like jumping rabbits and reptiles and just stuff you know, that you don't always see running around in Manchester every day. So um, you want to make that, um, it's also a great fundraiser and friend raiser for the Parks Foundation. So that's what's going on there. Okay. Uh, one thing, Councilperson Black, the uh, meeting between the Nature Foundation and the Town Council, that's scheduled for April? That is for next month. Um, it's the second Monday of the month. Okay. So I know there, we've got... April 8th? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and that's a joint um, meeting at the Nature Center. That is correct. And, and anybody's welcome to come to that, but they're going to be unveiling a really nice um, strategic plan and kind of a summary for everybody, a PowerPoint presentation with all the events. It's, it's very well done. So I, I'd very much there. appreciate if the mayor and the council could make their presence at that. Mm -hmm. um, the Nature Center helps us immensely on different items throughout the town as far as uh, the watershed protection, the uh, TMDLs, and so on and so forth. So I'd, I'd like for any, anyone, if you're possible, to be there. I 7 p.m.? Yeah, on the 8th. Yep, 7 p.m. Okay. And it'll probably, you know, it'll be an hour, hour and a half long. But it's, it's a very <coughs> important evening. I think I'd already kind of gotten everybody's pre-admission on that so when we set the date so I'm trusting that everybody will be there and like I said it's going to be a very nice evening very informative and as to Steve's point you'd be surprised what all the Parks Foundation does to bring Manchester not even just in compliance with but exceeding state um, mandates and, and requirements on all kinds of things soil preservation save the bay all, all kinds of with the tree economy in the, in the, in the town so. Correct. very important I have nothing to report. Okay. Duh. Nothing here. I don't believe I have anything either. Okay. All right, then we'll uh, entertain, entertain a motion to adjourn. And uh, if everybody could stick around for a few minutes, we have a budget work session. We have a lot of questions still, but we can at least we want to touch on a few highlights. And uh, then we'll have a more detailed budget work session on March the 25th in the next town council meeting, April 9th. Make a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Good night.